Taylor Sheridan really just has a sort of writing style that I love. It feels mature. It feels, you know, it's almost kind of gritty. Um, you know, one of the, I would, I would honestly love to see him work on writing a Coen Brothers film, you know, something sort of like no country for old men, like that kind of tonal thing. Like I, I always imagine him working with like really acc acclaimed directors. And I really think that acclaimed directors really pull it out of him too. Mm. Um, or they really do great things with his writing vision. Um, because in the lead up to those who wish me dead, his latest film, which has just come out on, I believe it's on Netflix mm. or is it HBO? Um, HBO. It's on HBO already. Um, we are doing a video talking about that one next week. But in the lead up to that, we wanted to kind of take an overview of the career of Taylor Sheridan and the films that he has written on, um, some of which he has directed, and kind of talk about the differences between the films and the, the good points and the lower points. And I think that it's best to start with Sicario when it comes to that, because he's written a significant amount of films. Um, but I think the most acclaimed films and most interesting ones to me would be Sicario, probably Wind River with Jeremy Renner and um, Hell or High Water, which I absolutely loved. Um, but we're probably going to break this into a three part series and each will be a standalone series here on YouTube. So if you want to see what we talk about with each film, just click right on through to the next video. And today we were going to talk about Sicario. So jumping into Sicario, he, he, he really got it. He got it good. The, the, Denis Villeneuve directing yeah. your film. Um, I mean, the cast of, of Sicario is chef's kiss. It is, it is fantastic. Yeah. The directing, the cinematography, like, yeah. I mean, when you write your first script and you get <laughs> Denis Villeneuve directing, uh, a, a cast as amazing as it was and Roger Deakin shooting it. Yeah. I really don't think it's, I would just quit after which that. Is what's, what's crazy I would just, is I would write that one movie and doing, I would quit. He's still doing great because you write that one movie and then it's like, how, where do you go? I'd retire. Yeah, be done. It's, it's like so the just fact be that known he's as the guy who wrote Sicario forever. Yeah, that, that, I mean, and Sicario, absolutely fantastic film from just about everything. I mean, we've talked on this podcast before about our mutual love for Denis Villeneuve, and um, we've gone extensively over his career. And I mean, I think it just fits perfectly when it comes to his style. You know, it's it's I really want to see him continue to pair with more acclaimed directors, honestly. Yeah. you know yeah it, it does seem like he's moving into directing more because uh, uh those who wish me dead i don't i don't think that he has a writing credit on it it's, it's just a directing credit um but yeah i feel like um i feel like his movies are the type of movies who if written by somebody else like if you took the story and wrote them by somebody else they'd be significantly dumber like i feel like he has a he has like a mission to not make them dumb Mm -hmm. Like a mission to make them feel mature and not treat the audience like idiots. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I want to say I saw an interview with him where he was like part of the reason they moved into writing was because he was he was trying to be an actor and he was just tired of or, or no, he was an acting coach. He was an actor, but he was an acting coach for people on TV. And he was like he had a hard time telling people how to say really dumb lines. <laughs> he was like, I was just sick of having to say dumb lines and like having to tell people. Uh, so he was like. So I'm trying to write a movie that doesn't have yeah. <laughs> these dumb lines. And I feel like he I feel like he's really successful with that, especially in Sicario and Hell or High Water, where they feel like um they sort of have a few genre elements to them, but they're just very mature, um they're just very mature uh adult movies. And one of the things that I think that he does best across the films, too, is that I mean, while yes, the plots to the films are solid, but I don't really think about the plots. When I think about Taylor Sheridan, Sheridan films, I actually think about how well realized the characters are and not necessarily the characters in their voices or their aesthetics, but in their lives, their emotional pull. They um, don't they don't feel a whole lot like characters. Um, they, they really do feel like people, especially in Hell or High Water. Yeah. Um, but in Sicario as well, they, Sicario, they feel very I mean, much like I mean, being in people. her shoes, uh, the main protagonist's shoes the entire time is really what holds that thing I never together. feel like uh I also I like I like that I never feel like they make decisions um, for the plot. Right. Yeah. Like or even make decisions because they're in a movie. Right? Like 
Like, uh, like I feel like almost some of the decisions that the characters make in that movie are almost anti-cinematic. Mm-hmm. Like, they could have done yeah. things in a way that might have been more movie-like or might have been more Sicario, heroic or yeah, interesting. It's like there's... But, like, the bit in Sicario... I, it's like a six-year-old movie. Can we yeah, talk we about can this go part? ahead and drop okay. some spoilers. <laughs> like, like, the, like, the bit where... um where um where Oh, God, why am I... Why am I about to call him Guillermo del Toro? Uh, Benicio del Toro. Because this is del Toro. Um, <laughs> uh, where he like shoots that whole family. Yeah. Like you think for a second, like this is a movie. He might not do that. Yeah. But he absolutely does because it's totally in character. And by the like, end of the every, film, it doesn't end in a. It doesn't end in a, in um, a bombastic, satisfying, shootout. Or, satisfying or 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 um yeah, your hero doesn't even win. Uh, and but it feels like it's like these are the the decisions that the characters would make. And you feel like you're in her shoes watching the things that are wrong and struggling with them themselves, which I think you can obviously attribute to the fantastic performances from the amazing cast that he always somehow (laughs) finds his way into. But you can also attribute a lot of that to the way in which the characters are written. Everything from their dialogue to their situations. And really, it comes back to situations too, because situations dominate Wind River as well as Hell or High Water. It's the situations that these people are put into. They're not super unique either they're not super unique well, they're often kind of genre tropes and plots well, but, um, but the way that he humanizes them is what really sends them over the top and makes it just it makes it feel like you're watching a different movie it doesn't yeah. make you you feel like you're watching all right i'm here for the action movie I'm here for the western well, also, like, it's like for, i'm here um, for the the great film um this probably falls a lot on denis villeneuve um specifically but uh the set pieces in sicario are very like um, anti set pieces, but they they are set pieces. Yeah, uh, like they make set pieces out of situations that wouldn't normally lend themselves as well. Like the border, the border scene in Sicario yeah. is incredible, um, and the, the dark, opening the opening the scene, scene is incredible. Yeah, o- and opening the dark- scene alone, the opening scene hooked me on the entire movie. The the house blowing up, mm-hmm. the way that that mo- that that was from sound design to cinematography to like across the board. When that house blew up, I was in it. I was in from, there was nothing that could pull me away from that film until the end at that yeah. point, which is hard. I mean, as someone who I often kind of get bored in films or, you know, will drop a film if it's not interesting or I don't really care about it. I'll watch half of it and not return to it. I had not, I did not have high expectations for Sicario when I first watched it because I wasn't really aware of the people involved. I was just like, oh yeah, it's a new film. I hear it's good. And I was like, oh wow, this, this film is already on another level. Yeah. And when it comes to those set pieces, the, the set piece in the dark, too, uh, where you get those iconic shots of them, like in the moonlight of the with holding their guns and walking in the dark and the moonlight, and the shadows. And like, once again, I wouldn't say like it's, you know, you, they're not entirely anti set pieces, but they're not. No, they're but not Marvel uh, set I guess pieces. what, they're I, guess not what like, I mean about him is that he draws um he, he drew tension and um, got the exact same. Uh, sort of visceral adrenaline rush that you get from massive set pieces mm-hmm. out of much which smaller situations. Contained situations in which they're also contained situations that are driven by people. Yeah. Not driven by outside right. forces like set, of set pieces the are certain so building much falling more, in this way and running this way and yeah. an attack and a fight here. S- set pieces are so much more effective when you actually care about the people involved. And they're visceral in that movie. Yeah. They're like, you feel like you're in them. You feel like you're sitting in, in the border set piece. You feel like you're sitting in that car and you are stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the border scene specifically is probably like uh, to me the best scene in the whole movie. Um, it's just so. I think also having Emily Blunt be basically the audience. Yeah. Was a really effective story choice. She also just well. does a fantastic job at it. Yeah. But you like everything that she does and everything that she says and everything that she feels, you're just sitting there with her going, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is insane. Yeah, and that's what like, makes the other characters cr- work. That's what that's what makes Brolin and uh, Del Toro work as like almost weirdly anti villains slash sympathetic characters. You know, yeah. I mean, there's even a like lot of Del Toro's character is morality in the film. Del Toro's character is like he's not a villain, but he is almost. You kind of can't figure it out like he points. isn't. He he is not a good. He's not the good guy. Uh, but he is sympathetic in some ways. Yeah. Um, but there also isn't just a masked bad guy in the film. Yeah. Which makes it well, out jo- to Josh be... Brolin is as close as you come to the villain of the movie, yeah. really. Uh, and even even he is human enough that it doesn't feel... Like, yeah. Nobody's portrayed in, in a really flat way in yeah. the movie. It's like, it doesn't feel like the movie's trying to really like say something to you. 
Like I don't, I don't come out of Chicago going like, oh, that changed my mind on like anything. But I come out going like, I, I understood totally why everybody in that movie was doing what they did. Yeah. Like whether it was right or not or whether yeah. you agreed with it. Um, every character, like no character was a villain to be a villain. No character was heroic to be heroic. Like they were just who they were and did what they did. Yeah. And it was just, it felt it was visceral and real. And, which is yeah. something that goes through the other films that Sheridan has been a part of, which is why I would attribute that to him to an extent. You know, it's the same thing in Hell or High Water, which we won't get into yet. But it's a situation where it's like, wait, there aren't heroes and villains here. No. But you're not, you don't feel like you're not being fulfilled on a movie. You know, there's a, there's a kind of a school of thought where if you don't have these proper arcs and antagonists and protagonists, then you're not fulfilled as a viewer subconsciously. But the way that Sheridan works these characters together, it's still fulfilling. Yeah. It's thought provoking. Which I think is the the most impressive part yeah. of it. But I mean, it's a, it, like I think I think the the most effective like there's there's all the whole like three act structure character arc everybody has to start in one place and end in another type like um, ideas about screenwriting which like absolutely work in in many movies. But I think you can throw all that out the window and say if your characters and conflict are strong, you're good. Like that that's what's gonna pull your movie off. Yeah. And I feel like Taylor Sheridan really excels at having strong characters and strong conflicts. And they're believable, but they're, it's not like superheroes. It's not, it's not like supernatural situations either. Yeah. You know, it's no, not they're, like they're, they're, they're realistic characters reacting in, in understandable ways to tough situations. That's, that's like the, the, the core of all three yeah. of them really. And that, that's what pulls you through. Yeah. So, and, and I think, I think that kind of wraps up our, section on Sicario. So stick around to the next video and click on through to part two of this three part breakdown of Sicario, Wind River and Hell or High Water, all written exclusively or are they exclusively written by Sheridan? Mm -hmm. He he does he, he has, a, he has the solo yeah. credit. I wasn't sure if there were solo credits. Um but yeah all totally written by Taylor Sheridan in the lead up to his latest film, Those Who Wish Me Dead, which he directed. Stick around to the next video, like and subscribe to the channel and comment with your opinion on Sicario. We will talk to you guys in the next episode.